neighbor narc tien wadrang actinuk makperi and wadrang bagaruk manameth mir bea nilinga wadrang bake karingarapu bunjo the ego wa the crow kimbani ba dian gilson welcome to wadrang country live from wadrang country welcome to lance tv Coming to you from the palatial new Camp Street Studios in Ballarat, get ready to laugh, think, love and sparkle. And now, it's time to turn that camp dial all the way up to fabulous. Here's your host, the multi-award winning Lance-tastic, Lance DePoil. Look like an Egyptian. Hi, welcome to Lance TV. I'm Lance De Boyle, and we're coming to you la 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 from Wadawan Country here in Ballarat, resting place of Bunjil the Eagle. Welcome to the show. Stick around. We have some big news to share with you tonight. Uh, Lance TV is um, turning the corner, and you're going to be well, maybe not the first to know because the crew knows. I know, you know. The board knows all of that stuff, um, but stick around, don't miss out. Uh, in the meantime, uh, pull up a drink and take a sip of your nearest sofa. Come and sit down with me. Oh, what a week! Um, Tuesday, sun's out, guns out, kids. It was a beautiful day. I was inside for most of it, work on the computer, but I did manage to go out and have a peek and get the smallest amount of vitamin D just to get me through the week. Hope you're the same, um, but it really is a case of spring is springing. I won't say it's sprung because it's kind of not here yet, really, in the scheme of things, but it's getting better. Hope you are too. Uh, I was um, fooling around on Facebook earlier today and saw a wonderful photo of a very famous person down in Melbourne, if you would please, Dr Sophie. There is Bill Bailey in front of a wonderful portrait of him in, uh, I think it's Hosier Lane down there in Melbourne. And if you look up on the, on the top right hand side, it says Cax One. And the reason why we're showing this is Cax is a Ballarat based um, uh, graffiti artist. So there is the wonderful Bill Bailey. We love him to tears here at Lance TV. Uh, only because there are certain quadrants of people who don't like him. But, you know, that's enough about the turfs. And, um, but bless him for um, getting a photo with that. And hello, Cax, if you're watching. Talking about wonderful people in the world, our very special guest tonight is waiting in the wings. And maybe I'll leave them there. No, maybe I'll bring them out. Uh, without further ado, please be outstanding. Uh, put your hands together and hold your drink in your mouth while we introduce the one, the only, Zach Eaton. <laughs> Darling! G'day. Oh, look at you. Mwah, mwah. Oh, look, and there's Breezy saying hello. Hi, how are you going? <laughs> Pull up a seat, darling. Thank you. Oh, look at you. You're as fit as a fiddle and <sighs> got a twinkle in your eye. Thank you. I'm going to enjoy this interview. <laughs> Hope you do too. Oh, looking forward to it. Ah, that sounds like consent to me. <laughs> no. uh, you are. I mean, you've got your your workplace on your on your top I there do. on your bed. Yes. Um, why are you here? I'm here to uh, talk to you about family ties, new business venture, things that we'll be doing in the community, older people, people with disabilities, filling those gaps in the market. So healthcare? Yeah, healthcare. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Can you show everybody what you've got in your pocket? I've just, got with just, me. I noticed this halfway through setting up for tonight and I was thrilled. There we go. Hold it up. Your camera's over there. <laughs> and is that burgundy or brown or purple? Uh, that is purple. Fantastic. Can I have a listen? Of course you can. I cleaned my ears. <laughs> I want to see if I've got a pulse. <laughs> Hang on. I want to see if I've got a pulse. Ooh. <laughs> Yep, definitely got a pulse. <laughs> Thank you for that. And 
happy I hope you enjoy cleaning that later. <laughs> um, without further ado, we do have uh, our first episode up for grabs. Thanks for being on the show tonight. Not a problem. No, uh, you say that now. Uh, our first episode, which all our regular viewers know, is Lance TV's Artist Corner, and tonight the artist is Beak. And we'll see you right after this. Well, that was our interview. I'm Beck, uh, or Beak online. <laughs> I make a lot of random things. I mostly do drawing on my iPad at the moment. I studied graphic design a few years ago, and I really, really enjoy photography as well. More recently, I've been making a lot of zines because we found this nice community that we've got in Ballarat now. Yeah, it's easier to sort of put it out there and stuff, which is nice. It was here at um, Fontanella. Fontella? I don't know. <laughs> Fontella? I can't remember whether it was through Instagram that I found it or one of my friends let me know about it. Yeah, and then I came to a mixer and we pretty much just sit down with paper and pencils and a bunch of stationery and stuff and just make stuff. Last time I came to a mixer was when I um, was submitting my deadlock zine and I'd read someone else's zine that they put in and it sort of set off a, ooh, this has inspired me to create something else so I actually, I've actually got it here, I've just, it was very different to this when I started it here. It was not this at all but all of the writing is pretty much the same, I just edited a little bit of it and laid it out properly, but yeah. So that was inspired by somebody else's scene. Kind of the same topic, but not really. It just sparked something. This is very old. This is very old. This was revised in 2018. So I don't know when, it was like 2016 or something that I made this, or maybe yeah. earlier. Yeah. I think when I make scenes, they tend to be very personal, introspective. It's stuff that I never kind of wanted to share it, but also never wanted to share it because it was really vulnerable. So I think making these zines is a way of me forcing myself to try to become comfortable with being vulnerable. Deadlock. Um, I'm a massive, massive nerd and geek and love watching TV. <laughs> And Deadlock, I, I discovered it by accident um, on Amazon Prime one day and I think I binged the whole entire thing and I think I've even got written in the zine something along the lines of if I had have had a brain cell in my 20s this show is eerily similar to something that I would have wanted to write. <laughs> it's so good. It's such a good show. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, on the identity thing, I really struggle with gender and sexuality stuff and for the longest time I would not let myself watch lesbian content <laughs> because it was too much for me. The last few years I've been deliberately seeking it out and yeah, Deadlock fell into that and yeah, there we go, that was sort of the zine. <laughs> I don't know, most of it was just me messing around. A few of the, most of the ones here are out of zines. Right. I just thought that they were cool and wanted to make them into a thing. Mm. Um, they're weird, but that's fine. Um, I have, I sell some of my zines digitally on Gumroad, uh, but I'm also hoping to start selling them more regularly especially locally, um, at fairs and stuff like that. Yeah, um, my Instagram is... I always forget because I've got one that's like got a dot and one yeah. that's like got a hyphen. I think it's hyphened. Art is subjective and it doesn't matter if it's good or bad. There isn't a, there isn't, there is no such thing as good or bad and even if you do think that what you're making is bad, as long as you're having fun doing it and 
someone's gonna like it and there's nowhere to go but up either like just make things for fun I really struggle with that myself I make things and I hate them um, but it's always the times when I'm just being silly and messing around and having fun with it that it turns out really good <laughs> Facebook, it's just you and me and you. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, if you are watching us on Lance TV Ballarat, you can leave a little comment in the thread if you would like me to ask any questions to the lovely Zach on your behalf. We can do that in real time. And um, yeah, knock yourself out. If you're not watch if you're watching us on one of the connector, um, one of the connector um, pages, pages, uh, Lance TV, Ballarat. There you go. Have you got people watching tonight? Oh, I think they're going to watch the link when it goes up in a couple of days or so. All working tonight, I think. Mm, yeah. Look out. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, are you creative at all? Ooh, not really, no. I used to be into like playing music and that sort of stuff and drawing and that sort of stuff when I was younger, but not so much nowadays. No time, really. No, look at you. There's no time. No time. No rest for the wicked. No, that's, that's right. Saying. Look at you. Um, yeah, well, that was that was interesting. And I tell you what, um, for those who are regular viewers uh, of the show, um, you'll notice over recent weeks too that the, um, that the format of the Artist's Corner has gone from that to sofa vision. Sofa Rama, isn't that what we called it? Sofa Rama in 720p, we're available. Um, so yeah, so that's that's a, a wonderful addition to the show. Just seeing if anyone's in the thread. No, but there are 10 people watching. Hello, all 10 people. Um, so somebody's watching specifically for you. Who's that? I don't know. It hasn't come up. It doesn't say. No mm. one's identified themselves. Right. I look at you sucking your teeth. <laughs> like, there's 10 people watching, but I don't know who they are. Mm. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Do you follow the footy? Uh, ooh, try to. I reckon I saw one game this year. Yeah? Yeah, just always working. I'm a Collingwood supporter, so... Leave! Get yeah. out now! <laughs> <laughs> we'll have none of that gold jacket no. malarkey here. <laughs> Yeah, so... I follow Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Yep. At least we get wooden... Welcome back. You are watching Lance TV. I'm Lance De Boyle, And you are... Zach Eaton. Zach Eaton. That's How me. How marvellous. Yes. Now, Zach, we have entered the part of the show where we start the interview. Very good. Are you ready? Exciting. Yep. Let's do it. Fantastic. Consent all over <laughs> again. I love it. I love it. Uh, Zach, we've been doing this show for seven years now. We've often asked the question of people, where were you born? I was born right here in Ballarat. Um, IVF. Mum, mum and dad struggled for about 10 years to have us. So, yeah. Last round of embryos. So, sort of a, yeah, interesting backstory there. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So are you, out of, out of all of your siblings, are you the uh, only um, IVF child? Um, me and my twin sister, yep. Ah. Yeah. Wow. Two for one. That's right, all yeah. All those years of trying and yep. it's kind of like, yeah, you can have two now. No. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And are you, are you um, identical or...? Um, no, so two separate embryos, so not right. identical. I can't yeah. think of it. It's got di, <laughs> or something, I think. Oh, not entirely sure. Something yeah, I should know, probably. <laughs> anyway, moving right along anyway. with me, trying to pretend I know something about medicine <laughs> so that our wonderful guest doesn't feel so left out. Um, growing up uh, in your home, mm -hmm. your mum... Hi, Leanne! Um, uh, your mum was quite a big influence on you. She she did a lot of uh, aged care work in the in your young years, didn't she? She did. She was a personal care worker. Mostly worked in the community, 
mostly with older people, sometimes with disability. Um, she always instilled in us how important it was to look after our older people. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, and um, your mum didn't collect stray cats, she collected stray people, didn't she? That's right, mum's got a big heart and she's always wanting to uh, take people in and try and take care of the downtrodden and help where she can, so lots of, lots of different people in and out of the house for, you know, months at a time, looking after them until they can get back on their feet, so, yeah. And that kind of extended out as well, like you, you were saying um, uh, before we went, before on the show, that, that your house growing up was actually kind of this centre of community and, and people were always coming up for cups of teas and a chin wag. And yeah, definitely, there's always people in and out of the house and, um, Mum had a lot of older people in the in the neighbourhood that she was close with, and we'd have them over for dinner, cups of coffee, and yeah, it was good. That sort of interconnectedness with the community, yeah. Yeah, amazing. So on any given week, um, like were there regular visitors through the weeks? Like you know, like Mabel will always turn up on Monday, but Fred will always turn up on Thursday. Like was it oh, one of those things? Or? Yeah, there was definitely. There was an older lady, she was French, her background, I believe, um, Holocaust survivor, and yeah, um, mum formed a strong bond with her because her family weren't um, in Ballarat, so sort of offering that family type vibe for her and having her over a lot and hearing her stories was really interesting. Wow, yeah. so you really had quite a fortunate childhood in in kind of, I don't know, observing the world in your own house and being kind of outside of yourself and taking the world around you. Yeah, definitely. I think that's sort of the, the value that we get from our older people is, is their stories and sort of their narrative. You can learn a lot. Yeah. If you're listening. That's right. <laughs> if you're listening. Um, now, you were in high school. Correct. When your dad got shingles. Yes. Talk yep. to us a little bit about that that that, that journey. So, uh, dad got shingles when I was probably about thirteen or fourteen, um, and ignored it for a, a long time, thinking it was chickenpox. It's the Australian <laughs> way. Yes, yes. <laughs> She'll be right. Yep, yep. And ultimately ended up in hospital, um, quite unwell, um, and that was sort of a big influence in in my decision to go into healthcare was the response that the nurses gave to him and how reassuring that could be in that uncertain time, yeah. And you were your carer, uh, your father's carer at the time, yeah? Not at the time, no. So he had a lot of issues with chronic pain um, um, up until his passing um, and that required um, lots of trips to the doctors, specialists, and that sort of thing. So it was it was later on that I moved in and helped to look after him. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, because shingles is really nasty. I mean, now shingles. Now correct me if I'm wrong, and I probably will be. But when we're younger, we know shingles as the measles. Uh, the chicken pox. Chicken pox. Yeah. So, uh, so which is all good and well, and you throw everybody in the same room, so everyone's got it all at the same time. Yep. Done and dusted. Mm -hmm. But getting chicken pox when you're a mature aged person is called shingles yep. and it's a completely different experience. It is. So it's from the reactivation of the dormant uh, chickenpox virus which stays in the nerve cells, comes back out and causes quite severe problems, especially for older people. Mm. We, th we've got somebody here in community who um, was undergoing um, cancer treatment mm -hmm. and got a nasty bout of shingles. Yep. and. She was like, she's not been the same since because those nerve endings are, are still kind of very raw and yeah. causing a lot of pain. Yeah. But what does, like, what does trigger it like? Uh, usually um, any sort of changes to the immune system, either you become unwell, things like that Cancer can trigger treatment. it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it just causes a, a reactivation. The immune system can't keep it at bay anymore. It comes back out and, yeah. You have shingles. Is that to say that everybody who ever had chicken pox, are they still carrying shingles? They will carry the virus, yep. 
Wow. So any at any point in time, any one of us can just go, oh, shingles. Yeah, that's why it's really important that our older people get the vaccine. Wow. Yeah. Didn't know. Yeah. Is monkeypox a thing in our community for, for older people? I'm not entirely. It's not, it's it's an not interest, been your experience? I haven't seen it in my experience, but it is a big issue in the older populations that often um, things like monkeypox and um, other diseases that can be sexually transmissible aren't considered an issue for them and they often don't take precautions against things like those. So definitely something that older people and people who are working with older people need to be aware of. Yeah, right. Yeah, that one just sort of like suddenly popped into us. Like, well, if we're all carrying shingles, yeah. like what else is what else is around the corner for us? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, we need to go for a short break. Yep. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have a bit more of a lovely chit-chat with the lovely Zach Eaton. See you in a minute. Hello, Facebook. And Jelson, I don't think I warned Zach about the whip noises. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick Yusuf, Salam Habib, just tuned in from Indonesia. Well, sal is it Salam Walikum for Indonesia? Um, Leanne Eaton. And now, here's my box. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Mum. <laughs> no, straight down there. Hi, Mum. <laughs> Big wave. Um, oh, I've lost everything now. There was... Oh, there's lots of hearts. There's, I've lost the whole thing. I have to go out and come in again. This is the joy of life TV. Uh, Chris, Bruce. That's the stepdad. Yeah. Well done, Leanne. <laughs> there you go. Good work. Yeah. So everyone's watching. So this is probably where all those people are, like your whole family is watching. Or should Leanne be at work and not watching Facebook? Oh, we won't go there. <laughs> won't go there. Just thought I'd throw that out there, Leanne. Sorry for dobbing you in. <laughs> it's all right. Can't tell your mother off. No, no, that's right. <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> yeah. Does your mum still make you know, nice things to eat, like cakes and... Uh, we have dinner every Wednesday at Mum's yeah. house, yeah. Well, be nice to her. She might spit in your dinner well, next no, Wednesday. That's right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Just not putting thoughts out there, of course, Leanne. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. There you go. Well, that's... that's. Oh, Leanne. Ha, ha, ha. Just finished. So that's for you. Very good. There you go. Andrew <laughs> Bell. Is monkeypox something to worry about with those with HIV status? Definitely, yeah. 100%. Any, um, with HIV, um, especially if you're not being, if your treatment's not up to date and all that sort of things, if you're being appropriately treated and managed, of course, it's less of a concern, but yeah, definitely a concern. Any sort of um, infective illness is of a concern for people who are carrying HIV. Yeah. Yeah, right. Again, that's that body kind of being a bit more susceptible to. Welcome back. You're watching Let's TV. I'm Lance De Boyle, and I'm here with the lovely Zach Eaton. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Um, in the scheme of things, uh, you you escaped high school, you weren't a fan of high school. No. Didn't quite complete it. No, that's right. But yep. um, you found yourself undertaking a Bachelor of Social, Social Science. Science at Federation University. Correct, yeah. Look at you. Yeah, it's what a good was, experience. What's Social Science all about? Uh, so it's sociology, so it's the study of how people interact in society, essentially. All that interesting stuff. Ah, look at you, a bit of a people watcher. Yes. Uh, that goes back to your childhood. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, from that, though, you did the first year of that and went, you know what, I can put it on, but it's not the right fit. Correct. And you ended up doing a double bachelor degree in? Nursing and paramedicine. Where did that come from? Where did... Where did the idea, it's kind of, I'm just going to transition, I'm going to go, sociology, which is kind of a, you know, a, a, an arts degree, 
to mm -hmm. I'm just going to go and do medicine. Well, it was always the plan to end up in the healthcare sector, but obviously dropping out of high school um, made that a bit difficult. Um, so, yeah, using that grade from the Bachelor of Social Science to swap over, um, yeah, was the opportunity to, to get back into that space. So, high school, yeah, but a double degree. What possessed you? Um, I really wanted to get into paramedicine when I initially took that up. Um, later on, decided that paramedicine wasn't for me and um, preferred the nursing side of things. But and when you say paramedicine, is that the whole, I'm in an ambulance, I'm driving really fast, and, or I'm in the back doing like, he was like a paramedic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a big part of it. There's a growing role in the community for paramedics these days, but yeah, that was the focus. Is there a, 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 a semester of how to drive really fast through traffic? Oh no, they don't let the students drive, unfortunately. <laughs> well, how do you learn that skill? Uh, once you get a graduate uh, position with Ambulance Victoria, they go through all of that. Ah. Yeah. So, but in the meantime, it's kind of like pulse taking, how to stop people bleeding out. All that fun stuff. Yeah, dilated pupils. Yep. Pin, pinned eyes. All of that, yeah. yeah. Wow. Lots of late nights studying all the different medications and... How do you remember all of that though? Repetition. Yeah, <laughs> lots right. and lots of Great repetition, learning. pretty much. You need to know all of your indications, adverse effects, everything, onset times down to, down to a T. So That's there's amazing. really no other way other than repetition and coming up with little mind tricks to help you remember, but yeah. But, but not only the, the medication, like all of that, but it's like the foot bones connected to the ankle bone, the ankle bone connected to the knee, but you all know, All like, that fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, like how does, how, well, I mean, how many hours in the day is there to take on and retain a working memory of all of those things? It is pretty much a full-time job working with the other students and going through all your lecture notes and trying to understand everything better and make sure it's all locked in there. So, yeah, a lot of time. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So for the kid that didn't do well at high school, you did a double degree, a double bachelor's degree. Correct. And what was the outcome of that? I ended up on the executive dean's commendation list at the end. <laughs> There you go. Take that, high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So you'd really kind of found yourself and hit your straps and went, yeah, this is, this is the way forward. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed uni, um, but just high school just wasn't for me, 100%. <laughs> yeah, high school can be like that. Yeah, it can, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, so you get your double degree, mm -hmm. you get the, the, the Dean's kind of tick of approval, yep. and then you double back and you go, actually, I just need to do a bit more learning. Correct. And what was your degree? Uh, so when I started work, um, there was the opportunity to do a, a specialised aged care transition year. And part of that was they'd pay for half of a graduate certificate in Gerontological nursing. All right. Geo ge geometric. No, ge ge what? Uh, so aged care nursing. Aged care. Yeah. And what is the word again? Gerontological. Louder. The study of aging. Louder. Gerontological. That's beautiful. How long did it take you to learn that word? Oh, I picked it up pretty quick. No, but no, I... no, you just Skype. You're just showing off. Leanne, I give that to you. No. <laughs> I actually... Uh, had a graduation earlier this week for another degree. It was a graduate diploma, so the next step up, and they were reading out the degree, and the person reading the degree could not pronounce it. Hilarious. <laughs> it was. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. What, what's the new one? It's graduate diploma, so uh, in, in between. In geometrical Yep, same focus. It's, yeah, sort of just below a master's degree. Yeah. Look at you go. Thank you. Um, so, nursing. Yep. Parametrics. Param parametrics. <laughs> paramedic. 
working into leaning back into aged care. Yes. Talk to us a bit more about that. So I worked in Ballarat Health Services for two years, um, mostly in the aged care, residential aged care space throughout multiple different sites. Um, and then for last year moved up to Maryborough to take on a managerial role in the residential aged care space. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, I'm no spring chicken, mm -hmm. but I mean, I personally get a bit weirded out when you, you hear those stories, like you don't hear them recently, but there was that story probably a decade ago where, where residents of an aged care facility was, were being bathed in, in phenyl. Y yes. And yeah. it's like, you are? Yeah. It's interesting that. Um, so the, the reason that they were bathing them in that manner is that it, it's an emollient. It puts a layer of protection over their skin. Obviously not a very nice or evidence-based way to do it, but um, apparently was coming from a, a good place. So, yeah, but yeah. old people aren't a science experiment. Exactly, right? no. So, so. so these stories kind of pop out now and again, and that must be really unnerving for older people in, who are still living in community going, is this my fate? Exactly right, yeah. So we've, myself, I've had a lot of experience in talking with older people and their big fear, especially when they're in the hospital, is um, are they going to come out? Are they going to be able to return home? If not, what does that journey forward look like for them? Um, so that was a big part of why me and my business partner have gone out on our own to... Jumping ahead now, yeah. jumping ahead. <laughs> Ooh, you're, giving, you're giving away the plot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, but I guess it, it is that thing. And um, We live in a country where once you get old, you become useless, you, you know. Like we, we look at, um, you know, Mediterranean families or families from the Middle East and, you know, the, the grandparents are always there and really a functional member yeah. still of the family. Mm -hmm. But, you know, here it's kind of like... <laughs> yeah, definitely, and it's, it's unfortunate. I feel like older people definitely have a, a lot to contribute to our society, so take a lot and learn a lot from other cultures in that regard, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it seems to be quite a Western thing. I'm thinking like even even like Asian communities are really, like they, they hold um, the, the wisdom and, and, and the usefulness and, and the connection yeah. with with their older family members as, Absolutely. as being so important and something that should be so respected. So when you're talking about people who are in hospitals going, oh, am I going to get out of here? It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a, it wouldn't be a very pleasant road. No, it's, there's a lot of fear involved, I suppose. Um, and I suppose it's something that we don't like to think about, um, that that could be our fate. Um, so we don't consider it. And when it comes time for those conversations to be had, it's very, very scary, very intimidating for our older people. Yeah, yeah, because it's kind of there's, there's the uh, there's the social isolation that comes with it as well. Because mm -hmm. you know, like in your younger years, it's kind of like we'll go to the pub or the club or whatever. So there's lots of sort of milling and and sort of being together with your tribes. Mm -hmm. But as you move through, it's kind of you move through and further away from from social groups unless you're a member of the footy club or. You know? Yeah, there is a lot of research out there with older people that, um, while they do tend to have less people that they're interconnected with, those relationships that they do retain become a lot more important and meaningful to them. But obviously, as we age, more and more people start to pass away or uh, not be able to interact for whatever reason. And yeah, it leaves people quite vulnerable in that regard. Amazing. Um, thank you for that. It was, it was, I don't know, we just, it, was, it wasn't anything we spoke about. It was just one of those spontaneous kind of conversation moments that occasionally happens on the show. We do need to go for a short break. Not a problem. When we come back, we're going to have some more. Zach Eaton, Leanne will be happy. See you in a minute. <laughs> And 
there we are. Um, Janine Adlam. Great work, Zach. Thank you. Um, Ange Allison has sent a little Thank clapping, you, Ange. clapping emoji, emoji, emergency. Uh, Andrew Bell, how is the idea of age sphere represented for the wisdom in older communities in relation to the gay community? What's the question again? How is the idea of aged sphere, aged care maybe, it might be a typo, but it says aged sphere. Andrew, what's the word? Um, aged care represented for the... No, how is the idea of aged sphere represented for the wisdom in older communities in relation to the gay community? Not how is the idea of aged... <laughs> Something about the wisdom. Let's just focus on the wisdom in, in older communities in relation to the gay community. It's an interesting question. I feel if like... If we can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the, the LGBTQI community is, I suppose, quite different in that regard to broader society in that there is a greater interconnection between people. Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, we didn't kind of. Well, a lot of us didn't get sidetracked by having children. Mm. Um, the older community. That's kind of a. I think uh, LGBTIQA plus parents is kind of a phenomenon of the last sort of I don't know twenty years or so. Yeah, really. Yeah. Yeah. Which kind of keeps us, I guess, more connected, mm. as opposed to kind of being kind of sidetracked away from. You know the the two point five children and the the nuclear family yeah. set up, and yeah, I've found sort of my friends within that circle tend to have much a wider age gap between who they are interacting with as opposed to my friends who are outside that circle as well, which is interesting. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I think I think even for LGBTIQA plus communities too. Like, I mean, I I look and I look at. I look at other men, strangely enough, um, and think, oh, I don't dress like that. Mm. I'm not old. I'm like. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Welcome back. You're watching Let's TV. I'm Lance DeBoyle. Zach. And Zach. There you go. <laughs> Zach just checked himself out in the monitor, and by the time he got there, he just saw the, own, the back of his own head. Um, but I'm not going to make any jokes about that now I've said it. Uh, <laughs> it'd be awkward, highly add. Um, so, you've been in the system for a while, you've, you've, work, you've been working, you've looked, and you've just gone, uh, you know, older people, as you were saying, there's, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty of people once they're in once they're in the hospital system. You have a very good friend from university called yes. Con. Yes. Um, and the pair of you started to compare notes about things. Talk Correct. to us about that journey. So my experience mostly working within the residential aged care space, um, hearing people's stories about how they ended up in that space, um, certain people, certain examples where it's it almost seemed like if they had better services and better plans in place, they wouldn't have ended up in that position, um, which is really unfortunate. And then Con's experience working in the acute space in emergency medical sort of areas, um, people who are really fearful about what the future holds for them and trying to get services in place and yeah, um, it just seemed like there were issues there to be addressed. So we thought that we were well placed to team up and address those issues. So for the idea, mm. did, were you both sitting at the kitchen table having a cuppa and went, you know what we should do? We should actually. That was probably a lot of mums doing, a lot of pushing over the years. Go Leanne, <laughs> go Leanne. A lot of encouragement saying that, you know, we'd be well placed to start up a business and address the issues out there. So after a lot of pushing, we listened. And February this year... February this year. You uh, went, we've got a business name, we've got a, an ABN. Yep. 
got a, an ABC, what's the other one, company number? No, no, no not, not a company, no. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we started up into um, February of this year. Um, Con made the, the decision to avail himself full time. So he left his, his, his job and yep. went, I'm going to come and do this? He did, yep. Um, very slow to take off. Very difficult for him, not having much work coming in for a very long time. Um, somehow survived. Um, Mum ended up coming across. She was a sole trader. Go again. Yeah, she brought her clientele <laughs> across, <laughs> which was really helpful. Uh, very big boost to us. Um, and things have been slowly growing um, up until probably two months ago, where things were in such a position that I could turn around and say, right, it's a good time for me to uh, finish up where I was working at the time and make myself available. Amazing. Yeah. What a great story. Yeah. So February, we're almost in November. Mm -hmm. What sort of services are you providing to people? Uh, we provide services to people um, who are receiving home care packages, which is an aged care funding stream. Okay, do you want to unpack that a little bit more for us? So um, uh, when you enter community aged care, there's different uh, funding streams. So you can start off at what they call CHISP, which is like an entry level scheme for minor needs or short term needs. And then if you're requiring higher level needs or ongoing needs, that's when you enter into what's called the Home Care Packages Program, which is a tiered system of funding. So we deliver um, services to people under that scheme. We do pretty much everything that you need to remain living well and independently at home, personal care, nursing care, um, transportation to medical appointments, getting out there and having a coffee, remaining engaged with the community, everything, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, do you work with LGBTIQA plus communities? We do. Uh, we've been working with the lovely Ange Elson. Tiny, Tiny Pride, Pride strikes again. Yeah. <laughs> Go, oh, you good thing. Yeah, so Tiny Pride has been doing a lot of work with um, local older people in the LGBTQI community, um, hearing about um, what their experiences is of aged care in Ballarat, um, where are the gaps, how can we improve things. So working with Tiny Pride has, has been really, really beneficial to us in delivering an inclusive service. Amazing. And, and there's been some consultation. There's been consultation from your end to Tiny Pride. Yes. And a bit of consultation out of Tiny Pride to, to you mm -hmm. to ensure that your work with LGBTIQA plus community members is hunky-dory. Correct. Yeah. So it's been very beneficial. Yeah. Look at you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, now you... We're saying on the horizon mm -hmm. that you, that your organisation, Family Ties, Home Healthcare, Home Health. I'm too, trying to read <laughs> without having it down anymore. Yeah, Home Healthcare. So you, your organisation's coming up with some um, home packages as well. Correct. Yeah. So we've teamed up with a larger organisation, um, and we'll be um, essentially delivering. Uh, home care packages, so that funding stream that we were talking about earlier, where we'll be able to accept clients, uh, assess them for their needs, and put everything in place that they need for an inclusive and individualised care. Yeah. And how, do, how will you get your referrals? Um, so, essentially, we'll be um, hitting the community, really, um, getting out there putting pamphlets in mailboxes. So people can self-refer, they don't need to go they through can. the GP? No, no, so um, essentially in order to enter that funding stream, people need to be assessed by what's called an aged care assessment team, which is a, a government team who will assess whether or not they meet the, the, uh, the requirements for ongoing care under those funding schemes. But once they have been referred, uh, accept, uh, once they've been accepted, I should say, um, they'll essentially advise them of who is out there in the community, who they can pick, but it's ultimately 
up to that individual who they want to go with. And where do you find those assessors, like at your local kind of, um, you know, community healthcare clinic or...? Um, so there's local teams, I believe our team is based out of Ballarat Base at the Don't moment, Don't look at I me, I'm the, you're the one who should know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I believe they're based out Phlebotomy. of yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So but so someone can uh, reach out to what Ballarat based hospital and go. I need a an assessment or so entry into community aged care and residential aged care as well is all streamlined through what's called the My Aged Care platform. So if people are thinking that they need ongoing assistance to remain living independently. Um, um, this is something that their GP can help them with, um, but it's all streamlined through there. So they'll contact My Age Care. My Age Care puts them in touch with the aged care assessment team. Um, they'll be assessed. They'll make a determination about what sort of supports they can have. And yeah, things go from there. So the link is the GP? GP is a good link because yeah, okay. yeah, they'll be able to put them in contact with um, yeah, the appropriate services. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was trying to fish because you know, like, I might, I might ring on Monday. Who knows? I yeah. just want to know <laughs> the direction to go in. Is there an age cap on this? Like, what? When does aged care kind of? What's the age group for aged care? Oh, uh, technically speaking, I believe they say sixty-five. Yeah, um, okay. In the academic space, but yeah, it's seventy-five, I believe. Um, for the funding streams. Yeah, right. Mm. Okay, so it is kind of the, you know, but what happens if you're 62 and you're kind of struggling a bit? Um, well, there are supports out there. Um, it depends on your needs, I suppose. There, there are other funding streams. Um, NDIS springs to mind for ongoing needs. Um, and there's a lot of supports that you can get through community medical care as well, GPs, that sort of thing, um, but yeah. Amazing. What's the name of your company again? Family Ties Home Healthcare. There you go. Straight down the camera, big smile. Family Ties Home Healthcare. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have reached the end of the interview. I want to say thank you so very much. Thanks and for, for having you, me. Though, thanks for being had. <laughs> uh, for you, you're going to get this lovely tiny pride bag. Oh, very good. There you go. <laughs> thank so, you very much. There you go. And... This phone photo of me saying I was on Let's TV. Excellent. There you go. Thank yeah, you I so love much. the way you did that. I love that. You were like, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I don't often get that reaction. People at least feign a feign <laughs> thrill. Uh, we need to get a short break. Uh, when we come back, we will have the last uh, 10 minutes or so of the show and the big news, the big Lance TV news. See you. In a minute. Well, that was our interview with Nurse Zach. If you'd like to reach out to Zach, you can do so by emailing admin at familyties.homehealthcare.org. Lance TV will be back right after this. I'm still here. I was just I just I went to went to go and do something else. Uh, <laughs> There's nobody else in the thread. If you've got any last, there's lots of, there are lots of hugs and thumbs up for you, um, which is amazing. Andrew didn't come back to explain what the idea of an age sphere represented. There you go. So what do you think of your photo? Tell oh, me all lovely. about it. It's lovely. It'll be going straight up on the wall. <laughs> straight to the pool straight room. Straight to the pool room. Straight to the pool room. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. How'd you go? It's hot up here. Yeah, it's getting <laughs> hot in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's probably also like your heart beating going, oh my God, I'm on TV and I'm uh, explain all this stuff. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Um, so with your business, mm -hmm. um, what is, what's your maximum case, case load that you can take on? Uh, well, it's adaptable, really. Um, we've got strong links um, out in the community with different providers that we can lean on. Lots of people who want to become involved. It's just a matter of having the clientele, their clientele base, to justify employing people. But we've definitely got a lot of interest. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, 
while you can offer a lot to someone, are you kind of looking for, I don't know, supplying like a wraparound holistic service of some sort? That's the idea, yeah. We want to, essentially we want to provide everything. Um, and now that we've been approved with this other group to provide home care packages, that's basically the purview of what we'll be expected to do is provide everything and everything, anything and everything. Amazing. Yeah. How thrilled were you when you got the news? It's kind of like, here's the email and you're in. Oh, it was a massive... Was it a turning point? It was a massive turning point, yeah, yeah. Cause it's, it's one of the difficulties in the way that we've structured the business and not being a corporation is that we can't apply to, pro to provide them ourselves. We have to work in with other groups who... Outsource. Yeah, um, they'll outsource to us as an independent... Welcome back, you're watching Lance TV and it's time for All Over the Shop. Wednesday 30th of October is a Women's Health Information Night and that's happening at the Shepparton Women's Health Centre from 6.30. 31st, ooh, Halloween Disco Bingo Chill Out Fundraiser is happening. Tickets are $25. That's at the Dalesford Bowling Club. Starts at 7. The 1st of November, we are here. An exhibition by trans and gender diverse artists. It's happening at TBH Studios, 57 Bridge Mall, Ballarat Central. The 2nd of November at the Bendigo Trades Hall is the Halloween Ball 24 over the dark rainbow and that starts at six o'clock. 3rd of November is a toast to Nick Gordon. For those of you who are friends and family of Nick, our condolences go out. Uh, so Sunday at DT's Hotel at two o'clock. The 9th of November, Creswick Garden Lovers Weekend and that's happening at the Creswick Neighbourhood Centre. We love a good neighbourhood centre, that's a whole weekend of it. Lifting the lid at the crypt on the 14th of November from 7 o'clock on the 23rd. Oh, it's got 14th of November. Oh, and the 23rd, right, goes on. Anyway, the 17th of November is a free event. It's a puppy pride at Macedon Ranges 2024, and that's going to be at the Kyneton Botanical Gardens. Queer Fairy Tales is also happening on the 21st of November at 14 Camp Street, just up the road from us, from 7 o'clock, the 23rd of November. It's the 150th Dalesford Show. That's right, the Dalesford Show at the wonderful Victoria Park. Many of us would know Victoria Park because of Chill Out. 29th of November, Bad Pet Portraits. It is a uh, Christmas edition. It's an online event, uh, auctioning portraits of pets. The 18th of April, for those of you who like to get in ahead, is the 61st National Gem and Mineral Show, Gemboree 2025 at Federation Uni, Mount Helen, and back to the studio. That'd be me. And you. And me. And you. <laughs> um, thank you for that interview. That was great. There was a a few unexpected turns and more information than, than we thought we were going to give out. But yeah, it was interesting. Was great. Yeah, it's good. Talking about more information we didn't think we'd give out. Yes. In, in, um, in the, that little uh, what's going on around Victoria, you were saying to me, you actually have a farm. Yeah, a little farm, a little farm. What do you do on the farm? Are you growing wheat or...? No, mostly... mostly <laughs> None of that. Mostly birds. We've got a lot of quails at the moment. Um, they've been interesting. <laughs> Quails? Yeah. They're, yeah. they're wee kind of... Yeah, they're about yay big when they're fully grown. No, it's just a bit bigger than a softball. Yeah, yeah, they're not too big. But what do you do with them? Uh, they lay eggs, little tiny eggs, but oh, is yeah. Is this your side hustle? Yeah, well, mostly for, mostly for eating. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, at this stage. You'd want a few of those to make an omelette though, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, I think you need about six to eight. To, to make up one Are they chicken nice? egg. Yeah, they're pretty much the same as a regular chicken egg. But you'd only need two eggs to make this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so you've got quails? What else have you got? Got chickens. We've just hatched some chickens, actually. Oh. Yeah. Um, congratulations. Here's the champagne and the cigar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you got an emu? Not yet. On the oh, horizon. Look at you, that hopefully. face. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, that'd be. That'd be the dream down the I track to have one of them. I know a person who lives, oh, just 
just the other side of Dallas, but, but not as far as Malmesbury. And he, I don't know if he still got it, mm. he had an emu. Yep. And it would do zoomies around this paddock. Yeah. Um, it was like, what's going on? And he'd turn the sprinklers on and it was the best thing. And watching this bird, like, roll around on the ground, kicking its legs <laughs> in the air and just having the best time. Yeah. No, they're good fun. So hopefully we can get one of them. We just need to figure out whether or not we need higher fences or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This this guy had relatively high fences and that bird still got out. Yeah, I can like, imagine so. Off the road, <laughs> do it quite often. Yeah. Um, but would you eat the emu eggs? Oh, and do you... Probably need... have to partition it up. They're pretty big. Yeah, right? Yeah. Put the quails to shame. Yeah, they definitely would. <laughs> Um, what's the interest in, in birds? Um, sort of grew up with chooks when, yeah, grew up in Smilesdale, so had a lot of chickens and all ducks and everything, so, yeah, it's, they're just good fun, quirky. Yeah, right. They've got no, their own. busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they've um, all got their little personalities, so. Really? Yeah. I don't know anything about birds. I'm a <laughs> cat and dog person. No, nah, no, nah, they're good fun. We had a blue budgie that kept flying away <laughs> when I was growing up. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, bluey kind of flew away. It's kind of like, yeah, sure, right, well, okay. We had foxes get into the chook shed when we were living out in Smilesdale as kids. And because I was so focused on the chooks, mum would tell me that they've molted. So when I've gone to school, she's brought back a different coloured one from the <laughs> shop. Leanne. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, cool. So you're going to keep with the the feathered feathered variety of um, protein intake. Yes. Yes. Wouldn't mind expanding out into cows and pigs and oh, the how like. Big's your property? And got 20 acres at the moment, but we're That's looking. That's a lot of room from yeah. the quail. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, we are minutes away from the end of the show and now seems to be the good time to actually uh, make the big Let's TV announcement. Uh, as many of you know, regular viewers would know that we've been doing the show seven years and four of those have been on Channel 31. Um, we, uh, the Lance TV board had a meeting uh, on the 3rd of October and we have resolved to have our final show ever on the December the 6th of, um, Friday the 6th of December. It will be the last episode of Lens TV ever. So we will be in the background uh, putting together a, a retrospective show and maybe having a, a swathe of guests in the space. But, um, you know, right now we thank everybody who has been uh, tagging along with us over the seven years and we really have appreciated the support and uh, we, we love you all. But um, we just wanted to let you know, so you know, you didn't hear it a street gossip. In fact, you can now go out and create the street gossip for everybody else and go, oh, I heard Lane's TV is coming to a close. <laughs> there you go. Look at you. Aren't you glad I told you at the top of the show? Yes. You would have been, oh my God, <laughs> why didn't you tell me? Yeah. I've got to tell the, the I'm going to tell the girls yet. No. <laughs> oh, wait. No. <laughs> so, yeah. So, there you go. The end of, the end of an era with Lands TV. But um, fear not, the, the organisation will continue. Um, as many of you know, earlier this year, we also ran with the Festival of Australian Queer Theatre in August. And we will be turning our sights to that festival. So, we're not really going anywhere. We just won't be on your TV. You know, we won't be far. Um, how many minutes have we got left? That's done. All right. Well, to all of you watching, thank you so much. Uh, our thanks to the lovely uh, Zach Eaton. Thank you for everything tonight. Thanks for having me. No, thanks for being here. <laughs> Leanne, thank you for, for Zach and, and the twin. What's the twin's name? Paige. Paige. There you go. Um, much love to everyone. Uh, thanks to Cheryl and uh, Dr Sophie and, of course, Patrick down there at Channel 31. Until next week, please remember, ceasefire now. Thanks for watching Lance TV. We'll be back same time next week.
TV is made possible through funding from the Community Broadcasting Foundation. I'm voiceover guy Randall Smith. See you next time.